Let us now move to strikes, lockouts, and picketing. Now, when we say strike, it is a uh, temporary stoppage of work by concerted action of employees because of a labor dispute. To be considered as a strike, there must be stoppage of work. And the stoppage of work must be concerted, temporary, and the result of a labor dispute. So there must be stoppage of work. If employees establish themselves during their one-hour lunch break at the gates of the company, holding placards to inform the passers-by about their labor dispute with their employer, there is no strike. Why? Because there was no stoppage of work considering that it is lunch break. Therefore, the employees cannot be charged with illegal strike. Second point, the stoppage of work must be concerted. The concerted stoppage of work may take the form of uh, walkout, mass leave, slow down, sit down, and similar activities such as violation of the hotel's grooming standards. The uh, case of New Rain versus Corner Wheels is illustrative. Now, in this case, the CBA negotiations between the union and the and Ducit Hotel resulted in a deadlock. So, the union filed a notice of strike. Soon thereafter, the male union members came to work sporting cleanly shaven heads. So, the hotel prevented them from entering the premises because they violated the hotel's grooming standards. The hotel experienced severe lack of manpower, which forced them to temporarily close its operation in three restaurants. The hotel charged the union with illegal strike. The issue here is, can the act of the union members be considered as a strike? The Supreme Court ruled that the act of the union members in reporting to work with cleanly shaven heads is considered as a strike. Why is that so? Because it was a deliberate concerted action designed to undermine the authority of and to embarrass the hotel. The union succeeded in forcing the hotel to choose between allowing its inappropriate hairstyle employees to continue working to the detriment of its reputation or to refuse them work even if it had to cease operations in the affected areas. In either way, the operations of the hotel will be disrupted. The act of the union was not merely an expression of grievance or displeasure. It was a calibrated and calculated act designed to inflict serious damage to the hotel's reputation or finances. Next point that you should consider is that the stoppage of work must be temporary. Must leave Arising out of a labor dispute is a strike because the concerted action uh, resulted in temporary stoppage of work. But mass resignation is not a strike, even if it arose from a labor dispute, because the stoppage of work, although concerted, is not temporary but permanent. The stoppage of uh, work must arise from a labor dispute. When we say labor dispute, it refers to any controversy pertaining to terms or conditions of employment, including disputes about representation of workers in collective bargaining. The refusal of employees to work because they will join the mass demonstration in protest of police abuses is not a strike. Why? Because... The stoppage of war, although concerted and temporary, is not the result of a labor dispute. But the refusal of employees to work because they will join the Welgang Bayan is considered as a strike even though they have no labor dispute with their employer. Welgang Bayan is a general strike. Moreover, the stoppage of work is sympathy strike, which is illegal. This is exemplified by the Phil Flex case. In this case, the labor sector states a welcome buy-in involving several companies, the purpose of which was to protest the accelerating prices of oil. The welcome buy-in lasted for several days. The certified bargaining agent at Phil Flex joined the welcome buy-in. In carrying out their strike, the union blocked the gates of the company, prompting the company to file a petition to declare the strike illegal. 
the NLRC held that there was no strike because the no labor dispute existed between the parties. So the issue here is whether the concerted activity of the union can be considered as a strike. And the Supreme Court ruled that the stoppage work due to Welgang Bayan is a strike. It is a general strike, an extended sympathy strike. So therefore, even if the members of the union had no labor dispute with the company, their refusal to work is a strike. Who can declare a strike? The answer is only a certified collective bargaining agent can declare a strike. Huwag niyong kalimutan yung certified, ha? Certified bargaining agent. Huwag kalimutan niyo. But suppose there is no certified bargaining agent. So if there is no certified bargaining agent, a strike can be declared by a legitimate labor organization. Huwag niyong kalimutan yung legitimate labor organization. So if there is no certified bargaining agent, a strike can be declared only by a legitimate labor organization on the ground of unfair labor practice. So what are the implications of this? First, employees of establishments where there is no union cannot strike. So paano yun? Hindi sila pwede mag-strike. Ano? What will be their recourse? Well, their only recourse is to file the appropriate complaint with the proper labor agencies. Second implication, an unregistered union cannot strike even if the employer committed unfair labor practice. Their only recourse is to file an ordinary complaint for unfair labor practice with the arbitration branch of the NLRC. Third implication is that a union whose registration has been cancelled with finality, tandaan uh, you with finality, a union whose registration has been cancelled with finality cannot strike because it has lost its legal personality and legitimacy. What are the legal grounds for declaring a strike? There are only two. The first is unfair labor practice and the second is bargaining deadlock. A strike on grounds other than unfair labor practice or bargaining deadlock is illegal. As regards the mandatory requirements of a strike, there are three. First, the notice of strike, strike vote, and strike vote report. The notice of strike should be filed with the NCMB at least 15 days before the intended date of strike if the ground is unfair labor practice. So, tandaan nyo, 15 days before, hindi within 15 days. Okay, bayon. The proper term would be 15 days before the intended date of strike, if the ground for strike is unfair labor practice. If the ground for strike is deadlock and bargaining, the notice of strike should be filed 30 days before the intended date of strike. The purpose of this is to provide for a cooling off period to give the parties time to settle their disputes in a peaceful manner before declaring a strike. Can the cooling off period be dispensed with? Well, the cooling off period may be dispensed with in case of union busting, where the existence of the union is threatened because of dismissal of duly elected union officers. What are the points that you should remember on this matter? First point to remember is that the dismissed officers must be elected uh, elected, not appointed. So that means that if the union officers were merely appointed, you have to observe the cooling off period. Second point that you should remember is that the dismissed union officers must be duly elected. Ano ba yung duly elected? It means that the election was done in accordance with the constitution and bylaws of the union. And also, no irregularities in the election. So, if the dismissed union officers were not elected but merely appointed, the union must observe the 15-day cooling off period before declaring a strike. Similarly, if the dismissed union officers were not duly elected, in the sense that the election was not uh, conducted in accordance with the constitution and bylaws of the union, the union must comply with the 15-day cooling off period. Now, even though the union in case of union busting, is given the authority to immediately strike without exhausting the cooling off period, it is still obliged to comply with the mandatory requirements of a strike, which means that they should still file a notice of strike, conduct a strike vote, and submit the strike vote report, and observe the seven-day strike ban. 
In short, only the cooling off period can be dispensed with, not the compliance with the other requirements for a strike. The Secretary of Labor may suspend the effects of dismissal upon a prima facie finding by the NCMB that such dismissal may cause a serious labor dispute. Now, let's now go to strike vote. The decision to declare a strike must be approved by the majority of the total union membership through circuit ballot in a meeting duly called for the purpose. The objective of a strike vote is to ensure that the intended strike is a majority decision. And the NCMB must be notified in advance before conducting the strike vote, at least 24 hours before conducting the strike vote. The purpose of this is to inform the NCMB about the intent to conduct a strike vote and to give the NCMB ample time to decide on whether to supervise the conduct of a strike vote and to prevent any act of violence. Failure to notify the NCMB prior to the holding of a strike referendum will render the strike illegal, especially when the conduct of the strike referendum is disputed. Now, the results of the strike referendum should be reported to the NCMB at least seven days before the intended strike. This is a mandatory requirement. During this seven-day period, the union cannot yet strike. The seven-day period is counted from the submission of the strike vote report. The seven-day period must be complied with strictly. That means that a deficiency of one day is fatal and therefore will render the strike illegal. So, alimbawa, yung strike vote report was submitted and then on the sixth day, the strike was uh, conducted. The strike is illegal because there is a deficiency of one day. When can the union stage a strike? The answer is uh, after the lapse of the cooling off period and the seven-day strike ban. This two requisites must concur. If the union would want to strike to coincide with the lapse of the cooling off period, it may take the strike vote and report the same seven days before the lapse of the statutory cooling off period pursuant to the ruling in NFSW versus Obehera. Huh. If the strike is declared illegal, the union officers who knowingly participated in the illegal strike can be dismissed. At andaan nyo yung knowingly, knowingly participated. Kasi minsan, the union officer at the time of the strike was not yet an officer, uh, was not yet elected as officer. If the strike is declared illegal, union officers who knowingly participated in the illegal strike can be dismissed. Now, for those who committed illegal acts during the strike, all strikers, whether officers or plain members who committed the illegal acts, can be dismissed. Regarding lockout, uh, this is just the opposite of uh, strike. A strike is for the union, lockout is for the employer. Well, when we say lockout, it refers to the temporary refusal of an employer to furnish work to the union members because of a labor dispute. The legal grounds for uh, a lockout are the same as uh, uh, that of a strike. Unfair labor practice, collective bargaining deadlock. The mandatory requirements are also the same. Notice of lockout, lockout board, lockout board report. The notice of lockout should be filed with the NCMB 15 days before the intended lockout if based on unfair labor practice or 30 days before the intended lockout if based on a bargaining deadlock. The employer should also conduct a lockout vote. If it is a corporation, the voting should be conducted by the board of directors. If it is a partnership, the partners will determine whether they are amenable to a lockout. The results of the lockout voting should be reported seven days before the intended lockout. And the employer can declare a lockout only after the lapse of the cooling off period and the seven-day lockout ban. The right to strike is not absolute. There are certain limitations on the right to strike or lockout. A strike or lockout cannot be declared on the grounds of interunion or intra-union dispute. A strike or lockout cannot be declared on grounds other than uh, unfair labor practice and bargaining deadlock. A strike or lockout cannot be declared without first having bargained collectively. A strike or lockout cannot be declared without complying with the legal requirements of a strike or lockout. 
A strike or lockout cannot be declared during the pendency of cases involving the same grounds for the strike or lockout. A strike or lockout cannot be declared after assumption of jurisdiction by the Secretary of Labor or after the dispute has been certified to the NLRC for compulsory arbitration.